Hello, my name is Aaron Parthapan. I'm a consultant radiologist, and today I'm going to talk to you about pitfalls and limitations in radionuclide imaging, uh, looking at bone scans. So bone scans are some of my most common nuclear medicine examinations. I'm going to go through some limitations and pitfalls, uh, cover some of the artifacts that you might commonly see on a bone scan, and also look at some of the normal variants. <clears throat> Most of the examples I've taken here are from a paper called Pitfalls and Limitations of Radionuclide Planar and Hybrid Bone Imaging by uh, Agrawal et al. Uh, in Seminar uh, of Nuclear Medicine 2015. So let's start off by looking at some artifacts. Uh, I wonder if uh, some of you might be familiar with seeing this artifact. You can see in the right uh, lower leg, there's a big photopenic defect. It looks kind of round. Um, this is actually a defect of the photomultiply tube and can result in this sort of false positive photopenic area. Essentially, if you see anything like this, then you need to do a quality check on your PM tube um, and repeat it uh, either on uh, having uh, finished your QC or uh, on, an, on another scanner. Um, and you'll see that, that that defect has gone. So this is a, a, a patient who's got a bone scan, who's got some uh, focal, what looks like soft tissue uptake in the left axilla, or is this actually in the bone? Well, on the anterior view, it looks a bit more prominent. So this is probably the soft tissue of the axilla rather than in the scapula. Um, and actually this was due to extravasation of the pharmaceutical. And what we're seeing is there's some lymphatic uptake in the lymph nodes in the axilla. So it is really important that when you're performing the bone scan that you note down the site that you've injected. And particularly if there's any evidence of extravasation, then uh, that's relevant for, for uh, the, the doctors to know when they're reporting the scan. So this is a very uh, unusual and very characteristic appearance uh, on uh, a bone scan injection where you've got intense sort of uptake in a kind of glove kind of distribution and on the on the early phase imaging and on delayed phase imaging you can see there's actually sort of diffuse increased uptake there in the soft tissues but also in the in the bones uh, just within that site uh, of injection uh, and this is actually due to an intra-arterial injection um, so again, uh, make a note of the injection site. If you see this kind of pattern of uptake, you uh, have to consider that it may be an arterial injection. And if, you're, if you've been using a butterfly or something like that, then it probably doesn't make uh, much of a difference. Um, but uh, it's, it's something that's worth noting because they can have some other effects um, uh, if you have used a, 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 have had a, an intra-arterial injection. In this case here, we can see there's some uptake here uh, on the left side of the pelvis. Is this in the uh, ischium, uh, in the inferior pubic ramus, uh, or is this in the soft tissue? Uh, and actually this is a contamination artifact. And we can tell that because it's got quite a sharp, de sharply demarcated uh, margin. So this is going to be quite close to the camera. So it's probably on the skin. Um, if you see this kind of activity, particularly around the pelvic area, it's likely to be urinary contamination. Repeat the imaging, repeat a static, remove the clothing. Uh, if you really can't get rid of it, consider doing a spec CT. But we do need to see a repeat image where the activity is gone to prove that this is related to contamination artifact. Here we've got uh, a nice image of the chest where you've got this photopenic over the area over the left chest wall. Um, this is a classic appearance of a pacemaker and is related to some sort of metal artifact. Um, it can be a pacemaker, it could be jewellery or someone's put something in their pocket that is uh, uh, causing a photophenic defect. We often see it with things like belt buckles. If you see it, again, do it perform a static uh, having removed the metal work. This is a very unusual form of, active, uh, of artifact and you may be um, forgiven for kind of not noticing this and, and not appreciating where it's come from but we can see these kind of unusual foci here which might be over the femoral head uh, and then something that's sort of sitting over the uh, left uh, aspect of the hip. Uh, well this is actually a motion artifact you can see that the patients probably move their hand from here over to here 
uh, and that's what's causing this kind of double exposure as it were so when you see this kind of dual image uh, you need to just be careful and um, need to, to again repeat the image uh, repeat a static but reposition the patient and consider immobilizing the patient particularly if they're unable to sort of uh, follow your commands uh, clearly and here on the repeated imaging where the patient hasn't moved their hands you can see there's actually quite clearly uh, there's no abnormal uptake there this is a patient who's got uh, a, obviously a urinary catheter in place they've got some uptake in the pelvis which is due to uh, metastatic disease um, but they've also got this uptake here which is probably the urinary catheter bag but what's this uptake uh, along the tibia is that in the bone or is that part of the catheter bag again you know you need to have some sort of way of uh, differentiating that so in this case a, a separate acquisition was made so you can take another acquisition of the catheter bag to prove that actually the activity is all related to the catheter bag and perhaps reposition the catheter bag uh, and make sure there isn't any activity that's overlying the bone which would be confused with uh, a bone metastasis let's talk a little bit about normal variants now we get a lot of normal variants in the skull. Um, and actually it's really hard, uh, as this series of images shows, uh, to differentiate um, uh, benign and normal variants from metastatic disease. So uh, on, the, on the left here, we've got kind of focal low-grade uptake. And these are, well, sometimes we don't know what they're due to. We never really find out, but often due to things like cartilaginous rests and uh, sutures and pachyonin granulations. This is an, another appearance where you've got sort of diffuse uptake throughout the skull, so-called hot skull sign. Uh, this is also normal, another normal variant where you've got increased uptake around the parietal bones, but relative photopenia in the middle. And then here you've got heterogeneous uptake, and this is actually due to metastatic disease. And as you can see, it's difficult to appreciate the difference between uh, the, the, the pathological um, findings and some of the other normal variants. Here we've got a few other normal variants in the sternum again, so don't be fooled by these. So this is a, a photopenic uh, defect, which you might think, oh, maybe there's some metal work or something, but actually this is a, a normal variant, which is a sternal foramina. So that essentially there is a hole in the sternum there uh, and it's just normal. These kind of uh, lines in the sternum are due to segmentation. And again, it's a normal variant. Sometimes you'll find that the, uh, nor the the bottom of the sternum there around the ziffy sternum is expanded and this is just a broad lower part and again a normal variant. Um, in, in this patient uh, you can see there's linear abnormal uptake in the sternum. It's very focal. Um, don't mistake this for metastatic disease. This is here due to a median stenotomy. So this patient has had previous uh, cardiac bypass surgery. So if you see this kind of abnormal uptake in the sternum, please go back and check with the patient if they've had any history of surgery. And you can see uptake in the sternum for months to even years after surgery. So uh, it's worth making a note of that separately if you see this. Sometimes you'll see this low grade uptake here in the ribs and uh, you might confuse these for rib fractures, but these are actually due to sites of muscular insertion on the ribs. Um, the clue here is that they're in consecutive ribs and they're quite low grade uptake and they're in the typical sites for muscular insertion on the posterior aspects. This is the patient who's got an abnormal uh, focus of uh, uptake over the left uh, anterior chest and this turned out to be calcification in the, a breast implant so again if you're seeing any kind of abnormal chest activity uh, thing to do is just to check with the patient any history of surgery or any uh, history of any procedures um, it, you might need to do a spec ct in this situation to resolve this to uh, differentiate uh, if this is actually coming from the chest wall or soft tissues here you've got uptake in the right side of the abdomen and pelvis so again if you see this you need to look for a history of a transplant kidney so we know that 70 percent of the excretion of the bone uh, agent uh, is in the urinary system so you need to check a history for transplant kidney if you see this uptake in the pelvis 
if you are not sure and you cannot resolve this as being definitely related to the transplant kidney, then we might need to consider spec CT to differentiate the activity from transplant kidney or bone. So in this case, the spec CT was done and you can see there's actually just uh, uptake is related to the transplant kidney. Here we've got these kind of photopenic, large photopenic defects on this blood pool phase image uh, around the uh, kidneys here. Um, and a very unusual defect, but actually this is due to polycystic kidneys uh, and polycyst poly polycystic um, liver disease. So that's what's causing these sort of photopenic defects. Again, uh, this should be in the clinical history. You might need to confirm this with spec CT. And here on the CT uh, images, you can see these multiple low attenuation lesions in the liver and also in the kidneys, which are consistent with polycystic kidneys and polycystic liver disease. Here we've got diffuse increased uptake in the soft tissues around the uh, upper arms. Here you can see there's more clearly on the lateral view. So the technologist has taken some nice lateral projections to show that these are not actually in the bones, but actually in the soft tissues. And in this case, this is due to a patient essentially going down to the gym a bit too frequently prior to their bone scan. And this is due to sort of overuse of the triceps muscles and has caused this sort of increased uh, activity within those uh, the muscles. Can also be associated with myositis ossificans, which is another condition where you get calcification and ossification within the bones and within the muscles as a result of trauma. Um, so again, it's just worth taking a history there. This is a subtle um, finding that you may notice on some patients, particularly older patients, and again, this is soft tissue uptake. So this is calcification within the artery. So if you're seeing this, particularly in an older patient, uh, this you know, could be confirmed on an X-ray, but it's, it's likely to be calcification within the, the vessels. Let's talk a little bit about pitfalls now. So um, you've got a patient who you're thinking has metastatic disease they've got kind of this focal uptake here in the thorax and also in the pelvis but there's this unusual kind of ring-like uh, opacity or density um, on the uh, left chest wall is it photopenic in the middle is it slightly uh, sort of increased uptake in those ribs um, so this is actually soft tissue uptake related to a lung metastasis <clears throat> and it's difficult to assess it can be um, due to chest wall invasion. But in this sort of situation, you really need to do the spec CT. So actually here you've got uh, unusual activity uh, uptake within the, the lung uh, around the periphery of this cavitating lesion. Here you've got some quite subtle abnormal uptake uh, in the ribs. Uh, again, in a patient that you're looking for metastatic disease, and um, actually here the CT reveals evidence of lung metastases, but there's also a pleurodesis. So some of the uptake that you're seeing along the chest wall is related to the pleural activity. So here you can see pulmonary metastases on the CT, but also there's a, uh, this pleural thickening and this hyperdensity within the left hemithorax is due to pleurodesis. So uh, it, these are situations where I think the, the bone scan is lacking and you really need to have a spec CT to clarify some of those areas. This is a, another fairly common appearance that we might see in, in clinical practice where you've got this diffuse ground glass increased activity uh, in the abdomen. Um, yes, you've got some sort of focal uptake in the ribs uh, and in the spine, but it's this sort of diffuse ground glass activity that we're, we're looking at. And this is a patient who's got metastatic breast cancer and the diffuse uptake in the abdomen is due to a malignant acidic, fusion, uh, acidic uh, fluid. So um, here, this, you know, this can be clarified on spec CT. And the spec CT scan here shows and confirms on the CT, this is all fluid in the uh, peritoneal cavity. So this is all acidic fluid and there's some low grade uptake in there. And obviously we can see the bone metastases a bit more clearly. Here we've got an anterior projection, a uh, very familiar appearance of a patient who couldn't empty the bladder fully. There's slightly more focal uptake. And when you look on the posterior projection, you're thinking, well, actually, is this 
focal uptake in the um, sacrum or is this focal uptake within the bladder and this actually turned out to be a focus of uptake in the urinary bladder and when we did a spec ct here we could see that actually this is related to a bladder calculus which does seem to take up tracer now we don't know whether this is due to sort of the the tracer adhering to the surface of the bladder stone um, or <clears throat> uh, some component of the stone itself but uh, we do sometimes see sort of focal abnormal uptake uh, with bladder calculi. So the, the take home message, though, is if you see this sort of focal uptake, particularly in the region of the pelvis around the bladder, it's very difficult to differentiate. A lateral view in this situation is probably not going to help. You're better off doing a spec CT. This is quite a subtle finding on the posterior projection in the, on the left side. There's some subtle uptake. Is that in the rib or in the soft tissues? Well, this is actually a patient who's got sickle cell anemia. And in sickle cell anemia, you often see calcification due to infarction of the spleen. And what we're seeing here is the a splenic infarct. So on the SPECT CT, the spleen itself is much smaller than normal. It's hyperdense on the CT because of the infarction and uh, microcalcification. And also it takes up tracer. Similarly, we've got focal uptake here, but on the right side of the abdomen. Again, are we thinking, could this be the rib? But it doesn't quite look like it's on the rib. It looks more intercostal on the posterior image. This case, this is actually a patient who's got uh, having a breast cancer staging scan and they've got abnormal right upper quadrant uptake. So this is a partially treated hepatic metastasis. Here, there's very focal increased uptake in the left iliac crest you might think okay it's a straightforward it's a staging scan so this is going to be a metastasis well unfortunately uh, a spec ct was performed and it turns out to be or fortunately for the patient it turns out to be uh, an iliac crest uh, enthesophyte uh, so this is basically where the the muscle or the tendon uh, pulls on the muscle on the bone and that causes a tractional change which uh, causes uh, increased bone turnover and uh, results in this increased uptake. Can also cause uh, avulsion fractures and things like that, which also will show increased uptake. So in this situation, uh, a SPEC CT was quite rightly done and was able to differentiate the uh, metastasis from this osteophyte. And you can see on the CT, there's this little kind of tuft of bone, which appears a little bit sclerotic. This is a patient who um, has, as an incidental finding, focal increased uptake in the right hip. Now, you might be thinking, OK, well, this might be a bone metastasis, and, and you, you might be right there. Uh, in this sort of situation where you've got focal uh, uptake, you have to do a bone spec CT. So uh, in this young patient, this turned out to be an enchondroma. Uh, so the CT component here helps characterize that this looks like a very characteristic kind of rings and arc CT configuration of an enchondroma. And you can get quite intense uptake uh, with uh, on bone scans with enchondromas. So enchondromas are benign bone lesions, and this is a typical location towards the end of the long bones. It's important to confirm this really with a CT or even plain films. Um, one thing to be aware of is you can't rule out Kind of malignant process uh, entirely so low-grade chondrosarcomas are kind of on the other end of the spectrum on our malignant and they can also take up tracer like this so you can't always exclude it so to summarize uh, i've been able to cover some of the common variants and pitfalls i think the take-home message is you just have to be really critical of the image quality so Whenever you uh, do a bone scan, you need to review the images carefully, look for sites of abnormal uptake, think about these common variants and these pitfalls, and try and talk to the patient. So if you see some abnormal uptake, talk to the patient and get a bit more of a history about it. Ask about any recent surgery, ask about if they've got pain associated with that, um, that lesion that you might be seeing. Um, again, repeat, Plain, repeat the planar static views if you think this might be due to say contamination artifact or um, due to some uh, metal uh, artifact in the clothing for instance and get a repeat image to prove after you've removed that artifact 
that it really was related to that. Okay. If it doesn't go away uh, with that, then you need to do a spec CT in order to characterize this uptake further. The spec CT really helps differentiate whether the uptake is in the bone or in the soft tissues and can, and in most cases, can tell you exactly what's causing the abnormal uptake. So I hope this uh, presentation has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And um, uh, uh, hopefully we can improve the, the quality of the imaging that we perform on a daily basis. Thank you very much.